Hello everybody and welcome back to Divinity Original Sin the Enhanced Edition. We're back in the Temple of the Dead continuing where we left off last episode. Um, right, where do we need to go? Can we get through here? Wargraf seemed to have spotted something. Ah, oh, yes. Signals, never to mind. Moving two fingers slowly over the palm of his other hand, Wargraf seems to signal you had better tread carefully here. There's treasure to be found, but traps as well. Okay, let's pick those up, shall we? Who's put them up, Wargraf? Um, why can't we identify those? Scarlet. Right, let's equip that and see if we can identify them now. Yes. I'll put the Scarlet. And you can keep that on you, because you're not going to use it ever. In fact, I might as well send that to Roderick, and that can go to Jahan. Quick check. 52, 52, 2 perception, 1 sneak in, 92 HP. No. I'll keep the other one on. And we need to put that back on. Yep. Alright. Let's just go through this door that wasn't there. Expect that in a moment. What's this? I found something. Yes, you did. Is there anything around there? Right, okay, then let's do this. Um, Roderick, I think. Can you dig up that, please? Cassandra's skeleton. Key of the Source King. We'll take that straight away. And um, who's got a little bit of fire magic? I do believe. Oh, again. Let's burn these bones. Come on. The glow of victory. Updated. There we go. Forge your souls. We burn Cassandra's body. The lich is no longer vulnerable. Excellent. All right. Shall we go back to Wargraf? Does that say anything? No, yeah, it just says tells you Cassandra's there. I already knew that. Alright, let's head up this way, maybe. No, nope, dead end. That appears to be it in that area. Alright, let's head back out again. So we need to go there and down here, I think, don't we? Or do we? Yes, we need to go down here. Take it easy, Wolgraf. Slow down, slow down, slow down. I just know there's something going to be wrong around here somewhere. Yes, take heed. I anticipate trouble ahead. Oil barrels. I don't like the look of those. Let's uh, 
So you can get rid of those straight away. Now I'm set fire to ourselves, why don't we? Of course. Makes perfect sense. Rain. I should put that out. Um, let's put a little bit of a heel on there. I should take care of those. I feel better already. Come ah. on, Johan. Let's give her these. Into the fray once more. A stitch in time, hey, my friends. <laughs> yeah. I'll get rid of that. Into the fray once more. On the mend. I feel better already. Wolgraf spotted a trap. <laughs> oh dear, you spotted the trap and it was too late, was the cry. Um, okay, sorry about that, welcome back. There was a, a little uh, driver error there, which uh, caused the game to freeze. And would not start again, so... I hadn't saved it, so I had to go back and do what we just done before. Oh, spotted the trap. Ooh, there we go. Let's disarm that one. Now I know it's there. <laughs> nice and easy, we'll rough. Don't want any surprises if we can help it. It's looking like it's pretty clear now. Hello, Alchemist. Ah, greetings, greetings. One of Cassandra's, I presume, yet rather more warm than is her preference, aren't you? And not a hint of rot. Strange, very strange indeed. But who am I to judge? I've been dead at least a oh, hundred years, and fashion certainly do change. <laughs> oh, it's all very true, that. We'll take all these. Anything else of interest that we need? What's that? Blank? No. Strength potion? No, no. Uh, we'll take those. We'll take those. And you're very welcome to my cash. Oh, hang on a minute. We've got something we can sell. Uh, let's deal with that. Roderick. Yes. How much money has he got? Oh, uh, yes. Get rid of this. Hmm. wonder why I won't give that to somebody else. Fire 100, Fire 109, get rid of that one, uh, get rid of that one, that one, That's very nice. One we'll power money back up. Alright, what are we saying now? Who are you? The alchemist, of course. I think I must have had a proper name once, but there hasn't been much occasion to use it for the past several decades. No, no. Alchemist suits me just fine, don't you think? 
And what are you doing down here? Why, isn't it obvious? <laughs> Beautiful alchemy! That science of the gods themselves! Yes. Before my change, I was a regular master of the alchemical arts. Tinctures for princes' wounded pride, powders to smooth skin ravaged by time. I could craft them all with ease. <laughs> These days, of course, I serve only Lady Cassandra. How she discovered a method of extending life without the use of the stone of the philosopher, I cannot say. She never revealed much in the way of secrets to yours truly. But as you can see, I'm as alive, well, nearly so, as I was many years before nature's expiration date. <laughs> okay, so what do you know about Cassandra? Ah, a kind ruler is she. Leaves me to my experimentations and my devices here, so long as I honor her occasional requests for this and that. Nightmare potions, paralysis salves, essentials for one in her line of work. I haven't heard anything from her esteemed brother in quite some years, though. Tell me, have you word of our great overlord, Bracchus Rex? Uh, Bracchus Rex was overthrown many, many years ago. Is that so? Well, my point about changing fashions rings true. Yet, his sister seems to be living on quite fine. Very strange, considering their forge of soul, but... My... Oh my goodness! Could it be that he... To his own sister? No! Oh, it's much too ghastly! What do you mean, what's too ghastly? Heavens, a thing like that? <laughs> well, you see, it's no secret that the great Bracchus Rex and his sister, our own Cassandra, were soul forged from a very young age. This gave them special insights into one another's psyches, and they were inseparably close. It also meant, however, that killing one would kill the other. If, say, Bracchus received an arrow through his heart in battle, Cassandra might drop dead over toast and tea halfway round the world. It is impossible to break a forge of souls completely, but it is rumored that certain steps could be taken. If one member of the forge were to be turned, for instance, into a half-living, half-dead creature, he or she would attain a form of immortality. <laughs> Thus... The fully human member of the pair would be freed of the influence of his or her counterpart. It could be possible that it was Bracchus himself who granted Cassandra this certain brand of immortality. Yes, the great king was gaining power quickly. Ha! I imagine his greatest vulnerability, Cassandra, had to be dealt with. But it is a terrible fate, you see. A lich, half woman and half corpse, unable to enjoy the pleasures of life, but only to pursue death. To think that one could exact such a fate upon one's own flesh and blood, unfathomable. Ha! Okay. Oh, I don't need to look at your words, I've already done that, so I will take my leave. Thank you very much. Um, what have we got here? Why the Seven Gods no longer exist? We've seen this that. This place is fantastic. Imagine all the spectacular experiments. Let's have a quick like look around here. here. See if there's the anything we can get Rob. Right Bottle voice. Sigurd's beard was a fight. Uh, right, who picked that up? Uh, Jahan. Where's the... oops, let's sort that out by type. Where's she? Oh, it's not. And where would this be? We need the recipe. I can't remember what it was we had to combine with it. Damn it! Um... Has Jahan got it?
cooking pot, bottled voice. What did we need to combine with it? Right, you haven't got it. Right, that needs to go to Jahan anyway. That needs to go to Wolverhaf. Is it in my notes? So, voice in the wilderness. Doesn't tell me. I right, need to get rid of that as well. Recipe portion, there it is. Okay. Where did we put it? No, it's no, it's not that. Seek Freak's diary, another thing is that. Is it Emil's research? Yes. All right, so it's the wood. Uh, Vox wood and bottle voice. Uh, Jan. And there it is. No, it's not. Where's oh, Vox wood? I know we picked it up, so who's got it? Come on. Broken off horn, there it is. Uh, Johan. Combine with bottle voice. Log updated. We found all the necessary ingredients to create a portion that can cure the mutants and combine them in good order. You call to Wolgraf. He awaits your queries. Uh, drink this portion, Wolgraf. <laughs> Let's see what it does. <laughs> Wolgraf eagerly grabs the potion and quaffs it down like a cold beer on a hot day. Presently, he starts to cough, then inhales the air deeply and talks. I... I can speak! I can bloody well speak! This is amazing! This is... I want to sing! I want to shout! <laughs> but hell's felt on a cracker! How deep a gruff I sound! And then again, last time I heard my own voice, I was but a ten-year-old pipsqueak after all. Not a weather-beaten, whip-licked, sorcerer-slaying ruffian. <laughs> oh, I can't thank you enough, Governor. Really, I can't. No gift as precious, no gift as titillating as the power of speech. Oh, those rolling eyes, those teeth-flicking teas. <laughs> Governor? <laughs> Don't mind my crude way with words, my friend. In all those years of ever so dreary internal monologue, I haven't quite moved on from the street kid vernacular. A girl's a peach, a boy's a tosser, and a so-called great big authority figure, whether a John or a Jill, is a governor. But that's neither here nor there, is it? I've got me voice back. I've got me strength back. And I'm more ready than ever to kick sorry, saggy sorcerer behind. On we go. The job ain't finished yet. More daggers dying for some action. Wow, okay. Voice in the wilderness complete. We're getting less and less. Quests as we go along here. Nothing else is there? What's in there? Uh, take that. Uh, 
Nice place for crafting this. All your stuff's here. It's in there. Jahan. Jahan. Oh, there we go. So we can come back and craft anytime we wish. Uh, so where do we need to go? We need to go to Phantom Forest Thorny Grounds. So that completes the Temple of the Dead. Oh, hang on a minute, he wants to speak to us again. Oh, mind if we take a bit of a breather, Governor? Even a blood ant ties a blood once in a cool blue moon. Okay, good idea. Won't mind sitting down for a drink. Oh, that's the spirit. To your very good health. Ah, I had it this spot. Now then, as for the real reason for this little interruption, that I've been doing a lot of thinking, you know. Now, don't laugh. I have. Thinking, that is, about those boyhood fancies of mine. I've become a source hunter. A great big hero in a big bad world. Back in the day, your order refused me. Dismissed me like a flea-ridden street hound because I couldn't talk. Fair enough, you know, no hard feelings. But now, I can talk. I can talk, and I can fight, and I can hunt. You've shown me what it's like to be a source hunter. The nobility of it. The worthiness of living a life in service of justice and chivalry. It's not too late for me. I can still become the hero of my youth. But that is not my decision to make. No, it's yours. So, I'm asking you, a source hunter, tried and true, whether you'll knight me here and now. Whether you'll make me one of the Order. Will you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I think I most certainly will. You've proven to be a worthy companion, worthy of the title of Source Hunter. He's been very worthy. He's not betrayed me. He's he's very handy in battle. I, I think I will. I heartily concur. Woolgraf, we dub thee a knight in the order of Source Hunters. A knight? A, a Source Hunter? That such an honour would befall me still. A... I could jump for joy. Scream and dance, but so, so solemn is this moment that I can but calmly bask in its glory. I, I, I won't let you down, Governor. I won't. I'll do the order proud. I'll swear it. Oh, welcome to the order, then, Walgruff. And there we have it. We shall leave the episode there. We have now completed the Temple of the Dead. We now need to go and kill Cassandra, which we will do next episode. So thank you very much for watching, folks. Uh, don't forget, if you do like the videos, leave me a like and subscribe. This is Grey signing off.